look into the word of God. So without further ado, let us pray at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity we have to look into your word. And we ask the heavenly father, Lord, that you will speak our hearts and minds. Make your word clear to us. As look, this very important subject. Looking at the signs of your soon return. Bless every listener, everyone under the sound of my voice that may be viewing. I pray that you will be with each and every one. Give us all clarity and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. So the message for the hour is entitled, Jesus is Coming Soon, Part 2. What time is it? Jesus is Coming Soon, Part 2. What time? Time is it now? We've already looked at from last Monday. We looked at how Jesus will return. We learned from the scriptures, according to Revelation one verse seven, that Christ will come back in the clouds. It says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him." Everybody's going to see him. It's going to be a glorious event. It will not be a secret. We saw plenty of scriptures from the Word of God showing us that this event of the second advent will not be a secret rapture, that it will be a global event that will happen. The sounds of trumpets, angels, the dead in Christ will rise first, though, and then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Glorious event. And brothers and sisters, we also learned that we need to be careful that we are not deceived because one of the end time deception, deceptions is one of the end time, excuse me, one of the end time signs which, where Jesus answered the question of the disciples, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? One of the, the, the signs or the sign, the major sign, the other signs accompany it, and that is deception. He said it, he talked about deception more than he talked about all the other things. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. And the major, here's what I'm going to say. And the major deception that Satan is going to pull off, the last act, his crowning act rather, the crowning act of his deception will be when he personates Jesus Christ. And so in order for us not to be deceived by this crowning act, we need to know what the Bible says. So when the Bible says, if he, if, he's, if they say he's in a desert, go not for it. If he's in a secret chambers, believe it not. Don't believe it. And not only don't believe it, don't even go see it. Because you may not even believe it, but you may, well, I'm just curious to see what it looks like. You go see it, you're going to be mesmerized and hypnotized by what you see. Because it's going to be so dazzling. Satan is going to appear as an angel of light. So we have to be rooted and, and grounded in the word. We have to, brothers and sisters. And so those are the things we looked at last week. Now we need to understand the signs of the times, the signs of Jesus' soon return. The Bible lets us know in Revelation 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time. Now, when is it? Now, not tomorrow, not next year, not next week. Now, today, now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than, than when we believed. So the Bible says we must know the time. And when we know the time, brothers and sisters, it should cause us to awake out of our sleep. No time to be sleeping. What time is it? We're going to Matthew chapter 16. We look at what time it is. Matthew chapter 16, reading verses 1 through 3. Matthew 16, reading verses 1 through 3. What time is it? The Bible says in Matthew 16, verses 1 through 3. We're going to look at some more things also, but I want to read this. Matthew 16, 1 through 3, the Bible says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering. You hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. 
They was like, look, give us a sign. Show us. Prove to us. Give us a sign from heaven to prove that you are who you say you are, that you really are the Christ, the Messiah. He said, look, you can tell by the weather what the weather's going to be like. You can look at the, the, you can determine, determine the, the signs in the sky, but you can't even discern the t signs of the times. You can't even discern how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right before your eyes. You can't even discern that when I preach and gave the message that the time is fulfilled, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that you need to repent, that was a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9, looking at the 69 weeks, it has been fulfilled from 457 B.C. all the way to 483, taking us to 27 A.D. Christ preached the time is fulfilled. And you didn't miss You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You missed it. Just the very name Christ, anointed one. When he was baptized, the Holy Spirit landed upon him in the form of a dove. They missed it. They missed it. Because one of the things, one of the major reasons why they missed it is because Christ didn't come in a manner that they wanted him to come in. They wanted Christ to come. They, they were expecting a Messiah to come to make Jerusalem and Israel great again, to make them a glorious nation and to get them from under the yoke of Rome. That's what they wanted. But no, Christ didn't come to set up a earthly kingdom at his first advent. He came to set up a spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God in the heart, the kingdom of grace. But let me say this, brothers and sisters. We know the scripture lets us know in Hebrews chapter four that we have a high priest. Which is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, both in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The Bible tells us we come boldly before the throne of grace and find help in time of need. The Bible is very clear on that. So right now we can come boldly before the throne of grace. God has extended mercy towards us. Brother, sister, if you were watching this right now, in this new year of 2021, it's only because of God's grace and mercy that you're watching this right here because God is giving you another opportunity to make preparation for his soon return, giving you another opportunity to get your character right, give you another opportunity to get your diet right and your health right, to give you another opportunity to make sure that you're getting your relationship with Christ right by spending time in the word, spending time in prayer. Because if we don't, embrace and accept this kingdom of grace in our hearts, we will not be ready for the kingdom of glory. Very important, brothers and sisters. They cannot discern, the Jewish leaders cannot discern the signs of the times. The signs of the times, brothers and sisters, reveal what time it is. But we have to be watching. We cannot be blind, nor can we be like the Jewish leaders Willfully blind. We have to see the signs, acknowledge the sign, and make preparation. Matthew chapter 24. Just a few pages over. Matthew 24. Looking at verse 3 through 8. Matthew 24. 3 through 8. All right studying God's word tonight. Matthew 24 verses 3 through 8. The Bible says here And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We've talked about that before. Deception, that is the major sign of Jesus' soon return. And we need to be watching, watching out for that. And the only way we cannot be deceived is if we're studying 
God's word. But Jesus says, take heed that no man see you. Many false Christ shall arise and shall deceive many. Verse 6. And he says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. There were rumors in the Greek, brothers and sisters, there were rumors in the Greek has an interesting meaning. It means a report. That's what it means. It means a report. Something that is heard, a report which you've heard are news reports. Interesting. We'll, we'll come back to that point. So the Bible says, you should have wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. The Bible said nation shall rise against nations. Ethnos. That's the Greek word right there. Ethnos. Or, and that means ethnic, different ethnic groups or race, race against race. Do we see that today? Absolutely. So nation rising against nation, race against race, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. When you look at that word sorrows, it means birth pains. A woman when she's pregnant, that baby is forming in her womb. Over time, she starts to have birth pains. But as the day draws closer for the baby to be born, those birth pains that, that were at one time far apart and distant, it was just the beginning of birth pains. But as the day draws near and near for that baby to be born, the birth pains become more frequent and more rapid. So as we see, that Jesus is soon to return. As the day of his soon return draws closer and closer to us, brothers and sisters, these birth pains, these signs we will, that we see in our world will become more frequent and more rapid. The Bible goes on to say this. Looking at verse uh, 11 and 12. Jesus talking about that deception again. He says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because, of, then he says right here, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The Bible lets us know, brothers and sisters, that as we draw closer to the end of time, the iniquity shall abound. Can I give you a little encouragement tonight? Let me give you a little encouragement, brothers and sisters. The Bible lets us know that iniquity will abound. As a matter of fact, 2 Timothy chapter 3 lets us know that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. However, in Romans chapter 5, hold your finger there in Matthew 24 and go to Romans chapter 5 with me real quick. Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 says this. Even though iniquity abounds, the Bible gives us a little encouragement tonight. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to look here at verse number 20. Matthew 5, looking at verse 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. So without the law, there could be no sin. Without the Ten Commandments, there could be no sin. We'll talk about the Ten Commandments another, another time, very soon. But the law shows us what sin is. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, verse 7, I had not known sin but by the law, right? So moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Now notice what he says next. But where sin abounded, Grace did much more abound. So even though the Bible lets us know in Matthew 24 that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold, the Bible lets us know, brothers and sisters, that even though we live in this age where iniquity is, or sin is at an all-time high, there's enough grace that is offered to us by Jesus Christ that if we accept him into our hearts, we talked about this before, we're talking about receiving Christ, overcoming sin. When we accept Jesus into our lives, brothers and sisters, that grace will abound in our life and it will 
empower us so much so that sin will not abound in our lives, that iniquity will not abound, they will not have dominion over us, but grace will abound. I hope and pray that you will, you will treasure that experience, that you will like to have that experience. We'll skip verse 21. Let's go back to Matthew 24. I made my point. Even though iniquity abounds, Jesus offers each and every one of you that's listening grace. And that grace, if you receive Christ into your life, that grace will empower you. You don't believe me? Go, okay, all right, go, go back. I, I got to do this. Go to Titus chapter 2. I'm getting off right here, but that's all right. Titus chapter 2. This is important. Because, brothers and sisters, it's all about Christ because we can know about the signs, but if we don't, if we're not preparing for Christ, it doesn't mean anything. But Christ is the foundation. But we're looking at Titus chapter 2. I have to read this. Titus chapter 2. And I'm going to start here at verse number 11, Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, that same grace that can abound, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse, four, verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and gl the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So this grace, that same grace that Paul mentioned in Romans chapter 5, that same grace that he even mentions in Romans chapter 6, when he says you're not under the law but under grace. This same grace that he mentions in Titus, Paul, the same author, says that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, empowering us to live soberly, righteously, godly in this present sinful and iniquity abounded world. Do you believe it? Jesus offers it, offers it for you, offers it to you, brothers and sisters. Matthew 24, verse 24. Matthew 24, verse 24. The Bible says, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive their very elect. So these are the signs that Jesus reveals to us in his holy word. My magazine right here says, the time, the end of the world. This is a, a, a special a Time magazine from a few years back. The end of the world. People are talking about Y2K and the apocalypse and will computers melt down and all those different things. But you can see we're still here. But brothers and sisters, we know that we're even more closer to the soon return of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes, us, make, makes it clear to us, brothers and sisters, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering towards us, not only that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day the Lord will come. It will happen. But he's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. He wills that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that's why he's prolonged his coming for so long because he wants people to be ready and he will have a people ready. But the question is, will it be you? The Bible mentioned nations rising against nations. This is a news article right here I found online, dated December 31st, 2020, from The Guardian magazine. It says, Iran, Iran says Trump is trying to fabricate pretext for war. Now, did not the Bible tell us in Matthew 24, there shall be wars and rumors of wars, reports of wars or potential wars? The Bible told us. And, and, and we have reports right here, news reports, telling us different things that's going on, showing us that prophecy is being fulfilled. Just Not just war, but rumors of war. They're just talking about it. The Iranian foreign minister, Mohammed Zafed Zarif, 
on Thursday accused Donald Trump of attempting to fabricate a pretext to attack Iran and said Ty Tyran would defend itself forcefully. Separately, a military advisor to Iran's Supreme Leader warned Trump not to turn the new year into mourning for Americans. Sarah said in a tweet, instead of fighting COVID in, in the United States or U.S., Donald Trump, at real Donald Trump, uh, and cohorts waste billions to fly B-52s and send arm, 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 armadas to our region. Intelligence from Iraq indicate plot to fabricate pe pretext for war. It says here the U.S. military flew two nuclear capable B-52 bombers to the Middle East in a message to deterrence to Iran, of deterrence to Iran on Wednesday, but bombers have since left region. In recent days, there have been increased concerns and vigilance about what Iranian-backed forces might do in the lead-up to the anniversary of January the 3rd uh, U.S. drone strike in Iraq that killed top Iranian general Qosam Soleimani. So uh, last year around this time, in 2020, this Iranian general, he was killed by a U.S. drone strike. And when I remember when I saw that, I said, Lord have mercy. We were, uh, look how this year starting off. But, you know, God in mercy held that, those things back. He held back the winds of strife. And thankfully, nothing has happened. No, no, no war yet. Only God knows what will happen. But. God is in control. Uh, God ultimately is in control. As a matter of fact, this article made it clear that Iran is not, has no intentions to just go ahead and just fight the U.S., but if the U.S. tries to, to do another attack, that they will be ready to defend. But you can see right here, the main point I wanted to bring out here is the Bible mentions that there is war, that there will be war and rumors of wars. As you can see, brothers and sisters, we're still in the COVID-19 pandemic. And who would have thought that we would be walking around with masks on, going in the store, uh, or school, or wherever, work, having to wear a mask? Who would have thought that this would be termed the new norm? But we're still in it. CDC says new COVID strand in the UK could already be circulating undetected in the United States. That's December 22nd, 2020. I'm not going to read all, all these articles here. A new a New York Post, Dr. Fauci predicts new COVID-19 strand will spread across the United States. Dated December 31st, 2020. Of course, it's already arrived here. Of course, the Bible talked about earthquakes in diverse places. We see, I mean... Brothers and sisters, I'm a, you can just type in earthquake on Google and you're going to find an earthquake that hit somewhere. It's like this, this thing, these earthquakes are happening more frequent, almost like every day. It's amazing. New York Times, strong earthquake strikes central Croatia, December 29th, 2020. At least seven people were reported killed and dozens injured. The quake with a, with a preliminary magnitude of 6.4 was the second in the area in 24 hours and tremors were reported across balcons reported that there are 60 there are 6,000 excuse me 6,000 major earthquakes each year let's go to second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three i'm going to read verses one to five. Second timothy Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, This know also that in the last days perilous or dangerous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Thinking about their selves, they're, they're selfish. And then it says, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. I saw something, uh, a clip uh, just today where this man was doing a prayer. Uh, in 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 in, the, in in a session of Congress, and the man ended the prayer. He said, "A man." Then he said, "A woman." Blasphemous, brothers and sisters. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Meaning, 
not having the affection, a man not having the affection for a woman, but having the affection for another man or vice versa. Truth breakers can't keep a promise. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. The Bible predicted to us, brothers and sisters, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, Paul is letting Timothy know that in the last time, in the last days, dangerous times, perilous times shall come. Now, is Paul primarily speaking of sins and, 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 and different things happening in the world? No, because the Bible says that there'll be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And then it said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. The world doesn't have a form of godliness. I think I mentioned this last week. The world doesn't have a form of godliness. The world is clear who they worship. It's only that those who profess to be the people of God that have a form of godliness. Dry formality. Formal. Without the love of Christ. Without a life of true repentance. Professing God. Professing Christ but they don't possess him. Timothy predicts in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, that apostasy will be in the church. That is a major sign that Jesus is soon to return. Go to verse 13. Verse 13. Will it get better or worse? The Bible is very clear on this, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, I talked about men promoting end time deceptions in these last days but let's go a little deeper we have individuals deceived into thinking that they can play around with sin and just all they got to do is profess christ and think they're going to be saved deceived and then go around teaching others that or giving a bad example to others hey all you got to do is believe you're gonna be saved no 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 your belief must have fruit. James says, show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Profession doesn't mean anything, brothers and sisters. By their fruits, you shall know them. The Bible talked about a moral decline, moral, the, the immorality that would take place in the last days, brothers and sisters. See the picture right here? Got a, 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 a minister right here, a priest, marrying two men. The Bible calls this an abomination. I know some ministers are afraid to talk about it, but it must be said this is an end. This is this is a sign of the end. Of the, uh, this is a sign that Jesus is soon to return, a sign of the end, brothers and sisters. When two men Want to be together? Or two women want to be together? This is an abomination in the Bible. Very clear on this, brothers. This is why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And the Bible tells us that as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be also before the coming of the Son of Man. Romans 1 verse 26 says, this cause God gave them up unto their vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. Mm -mm. And likewise, verse 27, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Let me stop right here, brother and sister. Any church, listen, any church, listen to me very carefully, any church, that places their stamp of endorsement on the sin of homosexuality. Notice I said sin, because God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Oh yes, God loves the sinner. He wants to change the sinner. He wants to transform that sinner's life. So we're to love everybody, but we're to hate the sin. And so when any church places their stamp of endorsement on this sin, by allowing homosexuals 
to stand before the podium, to stand and have positions in the church, to be ministers in the church. That is a fallen church and you need to get out. That is a church. I'm being straight up now. That is a church, brothers and sisters, according to Romans chapter 18, that has a hold, that is a hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You need to make your exodus. Because by remaining, you're placing your stamp of approval on that sin. The Bible says, get out so you not you are not partakers of their sin. That's a whole nother study in it itself, but just that alone, that right there should say, you know what? I got to get out of this place. But you know how churches get to that position? Now, I got to be real tonight. You know how churches get to that position, brothers and sisters? Now, I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to give you the straight truth. This is proven. Every church, and I'm saying this plainly, please don't misinterpret me. Please don't say, oh, you are against women. That's not true. Women have their sphere in the, in the church of God, in the work of the gospel. Men have their sphere. But nowhere in the scripture does the Bible say that God appointed a woman to be a minister over the church of God. Now, some of you might, I'm, uh, some of you uh, uh, may, may say, you know what, man, I, I don't heard enough of this. Click. The Bible says that the bishop must be the husband, not wife, husband of one wife. Not the wife of one husband. God appointed men as his apostles. Just like in the Old Testament model of the priest, men were appointed to the priesthood. Following that same example, the Bible lets us know men were appointed to the work of the gospel. Now women have their role. Women can share the gospel. And I know some people take certain takes out of context saying that a woman can't speak. That's a whole other study right there. That is the incorrect interpretation because the Bible says that Philip's daughters, they prophesied. What does prophesy mean? They preached. So we got some people that go to the, to an even, uh, they, they go even far right to, to the point to where it's extreme. But when it comes to having a leadership role such as an elder or pastor, God has not appointed a woman to that. And in mercy, I believe he did not appoint the woman to, to do that work because the woman has a burden already. He didn't lay that burden upon the woman. Do you understand the work of being a minister is more than just preaching behind a pulpit? You can preach. You want to preach? Absolutely. You want to give a, a message? Absolutely. You want to share the gospel? Absolutely. But God did not appoint the woman to be the, in, in a lead position as a pastor or elder in the church. And every church that has placed their stamp on that said, so we're going to allow women pastors and elders. We're going to allow women's ordination. Every church that has done that, brothers and sisters, eventually those churches went even further now to accept those who are homosexual into the ministry. You better watch out. It's dangerous to allow. It is dangerous to step outside of God's word. It's dangerous, brothers and sisters. But we, but so many times we allow the. What, what's the word I want to use? We, we, we allow the, the fads of the day. To to cause us to steer in a different direction from what the Bible tells us to walk in. We got to be very careful. These are signs that Jesus is soon to come. A falling away in the church is a sign that Jesus is soon to return. Let me, let me take you there. Let me take you there real quickly, brothers and sisters. Because all these things I'm mentioning right here, I'm not just saying it just to say it. This is Bible-based, brothers and sisters. 
Perhaps in the future, I'll revisit some of those things that I mentioned. But the Bible lets us know here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'll start at verse 1. Paul speaking to the church of Thessalonica because you had individuals in Thessalonica who were saying that Christ will come in our time. Paul had to rebuke them. He said, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Don't, don't let people tell you that he's coming in our time because there's some things that must happen first. And the Bible lets us know this right here in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't be troubled by that. Why? Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 4, the only person who meets those specifications is the Roman Catholic papal system. That's a study in of itself. We'll talk about that in the, in, in the near future. That system was revealed, reigned from 538 to 1798. And after that point, brothers and sisters, that's what the Bible lets us know that in Daniel chapter 12, that those prophecies were to be sealed. Daniel's prophecies were to be sealed, especially the part in relation to time, sealed until the time of the end, which came in 1798. When the time of the end came, okay, this is the time of the end. This is the time in which we are to look for the soon return of Jesus Christ. So since 1798, and I'm going to prove this later in the, from the scripture, from 1798, from that point, we can look forward to the soon return of Jesus Christ. But the Bible lets us know that there must be a falling away before Jesus returns. And we see a falling away even now in these last days among those who claim to be the professed people of God. There is a falling away from the truth, from the word of God. And God is calling his people back to the word before it's too late. Love is love. The Bible says God is love. The only way you can truly love is if you have God ruling and reigning in your life. And when God is ruling and reigning in your life, you will not go in a direction that is called in scripture an abomination. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Come back to Romans 127. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Man having the desire instead of the feeling, uh, 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 the tender face of his wife, want to feel another man's rough bearded face against his own bearded face. That is sick. And only Jesus can fix it. Jude 1 verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Man wanting man. You read that in Genesis 19. Bring those men out to us that we may know them. Those men were homosexuals, brothers and sisters, both young and old. God had to destroy the city. He in mercy tried to save them, but they did not heed the message. The Bible says that Sodom and Gomorrah are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. This, my friend, is an abomination. God does not sanction this church for promoting this practice. If you're in a church like this, brothers and sisters, you need to make an exodus. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What would they do after they depart from the faith? 
given heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. And let me say this. You don't have to leave a particular church structure or denomination to depart from the faith. You got people who remain in certain groups and denominations, but they have already in mind and in spirit and by the teachings that they teach have departed from the faith. Oh, you can't have victory over sin while they're still standing before the pulpit in the church that at one time are in their beliefs believe that you can have victory over sin, but they stand in that pulpit even though they're still pastoring that church. They are in mind they've already departed from the faith. To be sent until Jesus comes. You can't overcome sin. Once saved, always saved. There's no scripture to say once saved, always saved. It, read Ezekiel 18 and Ezekiel 33. The Bible says when that man, the, when, when that person who had sought God and, and, and turned from his evil ways goes back, all these deeds that he has done, the good deeds will not be mentioned. Only those things that he's done wrong. And he will die in his sins if he don't repent. The Bible is clear on this, brothers and sisters. No such thing as once saved, always saved. Any church that's teaching once saved, always saved, that church right there is not teaching the truth from the word of God, brothers and sisters. And we're coming to the time, brothers and sisters, where we have to stand by faith in Christ. Trusting in Jesus, not a structure, not a denomination. We got to keep our faith in Christ. We have to, brothers and sisters, because some of these groups that I mentioned mentioning were at one time Protestant churches, but they no longer protest. They've fallen. Luke 17, we're going to verse 26 through 30. Luke 17. Looking at verse 26 through 30. Luke 17, 26 through 30. Notice what the Bible says here. The Bible says, and as it was in the days of Noe, or Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In the days of Noah, brothers and sisters, the Bible lets us know in Genesis chapter 6, Every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. Every evil that a person could imagine, they did it. They took them wise as many as they saw. They were violence in the, there was violence in the land, crime in the land. Man, your wife sure look, look good. And that's my wife. Man, I'll take your wife. Shut up. It's my woman. Violence in the land, brothers and sisters. Do we see violence in the land today? Absolutely. Crime. All those different things. Now it's even worse than it was then. It's a lot. Same thing. What was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? The Bible lets us know. As a matter of fact, in Ezekiel chapter 16, it mentions idleness and fullness of bread. And also that they committed abomination, homosexuality. But a lot of times, brothers and sisters, a lot of, because the, for Sodom and Gomorrah, how they got into this sin, it started off with idleness. The Bible says an idle, um, there's a saying that says, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So because they were idle, that left room for Satan to come in to put suggestions in their mind. And not only were they idle, they had an improper appetite, fullness of bread, gluttons. And what you eat and how you eat can affect how you think. And on top of that, you're idle? Oh, that's a perfect 
that's that's a perfect situation for Satan to come in, Satan and his demons, and put suggestions in your minds, and you're because you you are in a drunken state because you have been overeating or eating the wrong foods or drinking things that you shouldn't drink or smoking things you shouldn't smoke. Oh, your your judgment is is distorted, and now you're gonna follow the heatings of the enemy. Let that be you, my friend. Please don't let that be you. But these are signs of the soon return of Jesus. The Bible mentioned about signs in the sun, the moon, and the star. 21, 25, the Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. The Bible said there'll be signs in the sun, moon, stars. Has these things happened? Or will they happen? I'm going to show you as we close out on these final points in this study. Let's look at it real quickly. We're going to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 29 through 30. Matthew 24, looking at verse 29 through 30. The Bible says, but Matthew 29, 24 rather, Matthew 24, verse 29 through 30. We'll close out on these points here. Matthew 24, 29 through 30. Here we go. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That tribulation is talking about that tribulation I mentioned earlier from 538 to 1798. That tribulation of God's people that went through persecution. That's why I was termed the dark ages. The people were in a state of darkness because the papacy locked the word of God in a language that the people could not understand. An uh, unknown, un, unknown, unknown tongue. Latin, for example. But God raised up Protestant reformers to stand up not only the Waldensians, but also others. The, Pro the Protestant Reformation, he raised that up. And because of this Protestant Reformation, the, the, for the elect's sake, this tribulation was cut short. The persecution was, was cut short even though the papacy reigned from 538 to 1798. But the Bible, I just want to throw that context out there. So this is after, this is after or at the closing as we're coming to the close of 1798. So as, as the Dark Ages is coming to a close, which it closed in 1798, this is when these things are happening. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and it says, and, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the Bible tells us here, beside the sun will be darkened, moon in the blood. And the Bible also talked about the stars shall fall from heaven. And after this, the coming of the Son of Man. Now, Revelation also mentioned these signs, but it mentioned something that will happen first before the sun will be darkened. Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. Revelation 6, 12 through 17. The Bible says this. They're going to show if these events happen or will they happen. Revelation 6, verse 12 through 17. The Bible says, And I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was an earthquake, and the sun became dark as a, became black as a sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she has shaken up a mighty wind. And the heaven, so what happens? Earthquake, great earthquake. Then the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Then the moon became as blood. Then the stars fell from heaven. Four things. But after that, the Bible says in verse 14, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of her place and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. They said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sit upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand Four events before the fifth event, which is the second return of Christ. Now, of course, after 
that last event before the advent of Christ, the stars falling from heaven. Between that and the second advent of Christ, there are some events that will take place. The mark of the beast is one of them. That's another study right there in of itself. But here it's just kind of giving us a, a run through of different events that, that will happen, showing us how close we are to the soon return of Jesus Christ. So, before the heavenly signs, the Bible tells us that there was an earthquake. The earthquake was the great Lisbon earthquake. You can, you can look this up in history. The great Lisbon earthquake, November 1st, 1755. And there's a picture right there found on the internet to kind of depict what happened. The controversy 304, paragraph 2. In fulfillment of this prophecy, there occurred in the year 1755 the most terrible earthquake that has ever been recorded. Though commonly known as the earthquake of Lisbon, it extended to the greater part of Europe, Africa, and America. And it was felt in Greenland and in the West Indies, in the island of Madeira, in Norway and Sweden, Great Britain and Ireland. It pervaded an, an extent of not less than four square million, four million square miles, excuse me. In Africa, the shock was almost as severe as in Europe. A great part of Algiers was destroyed, and a short distance from Morocco, a village containing eight or ten thousand inhabitants was swallowed up. A vast wave swept over the coast of Spain and Africa, engulfing cities and causing great destruction. So that Great Lisbon earthquake was fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelation chapter six, mentioning a great earthquake. It says right here, in Lisbon, a sound of thunder was heard underground. And immediately afterwards, a violent shock threw down the greater part of that city. In the course of about six minutes, 60,000 persons perished. Great Controversy, page 305, paragraph one. The sea first retired and laid the bear dry, and it rolled in, rising 50 feet or more above its ordinary level. Among other extraordinary events related to have occurred at Lisbon during the catastrophe and was subs subsidence of a new quay built entirely of marble at an immense expense. A great concourse of people had collected there for safety as a spot where they might be beyond the reach of the falling ruins. But suddenly the quay sank down with all the people on it and no one. Not one of the dead bodies ever floated to the surface. Now check this out. Great Controversy 305, paragraph 2. The shock of the earthquake was instantly followed by the fall of every church and convent. Almost all the large public buildings and more than one-fourth of the houses. And about two hours after the shock, fires broke out in different quarters and raged with such violence for the space of nearly three days that the city was completely desolated. The earthquake happened on a holy day when the churches and convents were full of people, very few of whom escaped. The terror of the people was beyond description. Nobody wept. It was beyond tears. They ran hither and thither, delirious with, with horror and astonishment, beating their faces and breasts, crying, Mescadora, the world's at an end. Mothers forgot their children and ran about with loaded crucifixed images. Mm, mm, mm. Unfortunately, many ran to the churches for protection, but in vain was the sacrament exposed. In vain did the poor creatures embrace the altar's images. Priests and people were buried in one common ruin. It is estimated, it has been estimated that 90,000 persons lost their lives on that fatal day. Isn't that sad, brothers and sisters? Individuals that were holding, hanging to their crucifixes and, and, and their images and idols, and but they died. Died. Wikipedia says right here, talking about the Lisbon earthquake 
of 1755, November 1st, estimates placed the death toll in Lisbon alone between 10,000 to 100,000 people, making it one of the deadliest earthquakes in history. Terrible earthquake. Because of November 1st, because November 1st is All Saints Day, that's why in the Great Controversy mentioned it was a holy day, it was All Saints Day. November 1st is All Saints Day. And a large part of the population was attending mass at the moment the earthquake struck. They were, they were at mass. The churches unable to withstand the seismic shock collapse, killing or injuring thousands of worshipers. And this right here is a map kind of showing the extent of how far this earthquake reached, felt in different areas throughout the world. And the Bible tell us, told us that after the earthquake, the sun will be darkened. The dark day of May 19th, 1780. R.M. Devins, our first century, age 89. So folks want to talk about a dark day. This, this is the dark day right here. It's already happened based upon the word of God. <clears throat> Almost, if not altogether alone, as the most mysterious and, and as yet unexplained phenomenon of its kind stands the dark day of May 19, 1780, a most unaccountable darkening of the whole visible heavens and atmosphere in New England. As a matter of fact, we're told that, based upon the history, that school was let out early. Because it would, when the sun was darkened, it, it happened basically... It was still around a time where it should have been daytime still. But it got dark. Animals turned in for the night, confused, thinking it was time for bed. Schools were let out. Kids wondering, going back to their home in darkness, a little fearful for what's going on. It says right here, an eyewitness living in Massachusetts described the event as follows. In the morning, the sun rose clear, but was soon overcast. The clouds became lowery, and from them, black and ominous as they soon appeared, lightning flash, thunder rolled, and a little rain fell. Toward nine o'clock, the clouds became thinner and assumed a brassy or coppery appearance, and earth, rocks, trees, buildings, waters, and persons were changed changed by this strange unearthly light. A few minutes later, a heavy black cloud spread over the entire sky except a narrow rim at the horizon, and it was as dark as it usually is at nine o'clock on a summer evening. Only difference was it was still supposed to be daytime. This is Great Controversy 306, paragraph three. The people cried out in Great Controversy 306, it says they, the travelers as they were, were, were in a, they were put, they put up at a nearest farmhouse. They said, what is coming? Queried every lip and heart. It seemed as if a hurricane was about to dash across the land or as if it was the day of the consummation of all things. And that night, brothers and sisters, that same day, that night, the moon came blood. The Bible tells us in Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. It's happened. It's happened. It says right here in Great Controversy 307, I got it highlighted right here. Though at nine o'clock that night the moon rose to full, it had not the least effect to dispel the death light shadows. After midnight, the darkness disappeared and the moon when first visible, had the appearance of blood. Great Controversy 307, paragraph 4. You know, the next thing that will happen, the Bible tells us, after the earthquake, after the Lisbon earthquake, after the dark sun, the sun being darkened and causing a dark day, and then after the moon turned to blood that night, a few years later, November 13th, 1833, the Bible told us that the stars will fall. Great Controversy 3, 3, 3, paragraph 1. The prophecy received a striking and impressive fulfillment in the great meteoric shower of November 13, 1833. That was the most extensive and wonderful display of falling stars which has ever been recorded. The whole firmament over all the United States being then for a few hours in fiery commotion. As a matter of fact, 
uh, Abraham Lincoln and Franklin uh, Frederick Douglass witness this particular event. Brothers and sisters, I'm gonna say this. If you wanna find out more information about this, read this book. This book is called The Great Controversy. So if you want to have more information, if you wanna learn more about what I just shared, please get you the book, Great Controversy. You can find this book in PDF. Uh, if you need someone to get you a copy of this book, please, please, by, please, uh, you can contact me and I can give you, I can send you a copy of this book because you need to read this book and it's in line with the word of God, has scriptures to back up what it's saying. But please, everything that I shared tonight is also in this book and it has historical references backing up that these events have happened. As I close, these events, brothers and sisters, have already happened. Earthquake, that's happened. The Bible talked about after the earthquake, the sun being darkened, that happened. After that, the moon, that same day, that night, turned to blood, that happened. The falling of the stars in 1833, that happened. What's the next event? Based upon that prophecy in Revelation chapter 6, we know that there are other things that must happen. But based upon that, that, that prophecy given, the soon return of Jesus Christ. happened, brothers and sisters. Jesus is soon to come. Review and Herald, November 22nd, 1906, paragraph 4. The signs in the sun, moon, and stars have been fulfilled. Since that time, earthquakes, tempests, tidal waves, pestilence, and famine have multiplied. The most awful destructions by fire and flood are falling one another in quick succession. The terrible disasters that are taking place from week to week, speak to us in earnest tones of warning, declaring that the end is near, that something great and decisive will soon of necessity take place. Are you ready? Are you ready, brothers and sisters? It's coming. We see more signs happening in the world as we draw close to the end of time. Wildfires in California, I'm sure you've been hearing about those wildfires that's been happening. What else did Jesus say would happen? Matthew, uh, Luke 21, as we close. Luke 21. Luke 21. Brothers and sisters, if there was ever a time that we need to prepare for the soon return of Jesus, that time is now, right now. Luke 21, verse 25 and 26. The Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun that happen, and in the moon that happen. And in the stars, that happened. And upon the earth, stress of nations, that's happening. People are distressed right now because of the state of the world economy and also because of the state of, of, of health, the, the, the health crisis that we're in right now. People are fearful because of this COVID-19. They are fearful because, because they don't know what's going to happen. People are out of jobs. They're out of work. People are distressed. Nations are distressed. Then it says, upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. We see it now, it's happening. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's the next event. And then verse 27, and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. How soon is Jesus to come? Based upon the word of God, brothers and sisters, how soon? Franklin Graham, this is the article back in 2017 of October the 4th. He said right here, our nation is in trouble. Talking about America. USA Today magazine said at one time back in 2017, October 3rd, storms, earthquakes, North Korea, and now Las Vegas massacre. We have to wonder what's next. The Bible told us what's next. We need to get ready for it, brothers and sisters. We need to get ready for it. Why does Jesus reveal to us these signs? John 14, 29. And I have told you before it come to pass, 
that when it come to pass, you might believe. Jesus wants you to believe, brothers and sisters. He wants you to believe, not just that these things are happening, but he wants you to believe. Believe what? Believe on him. If he prophesied that these things would happen and they're happening, be sure that the next event, after you know other events, according to Bible prophecy, will happen, like the mark of the beast, like I said. But understand that Jesus is soon to return. And he said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming. He's coming and we have to be ready. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be with him. He has prepared a place for you. He wants to spend eternity with you. He has a mansion for you. A room in the father's house. And if you're not there, if you're not there, it's going to hurt the heart of God. Because the Bible told us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through Christ might be saved. We come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in this time of need. Christ wants to help you. He wants to empower you, empower you with his Holy Spirit. He wants to transform your life and your character so that you could be ready for this glorious event that is soon to happen. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Have others, do others see Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look upon his face? Can you look up and say right now, based upon your life, based upon your life right now, what is it that you're struggling with? What is your addiction? What sin has you bound? Can you look up right now in your condition and say, this is my God? Or will you say, like, the, like it said, that it, that it will be prophesied, that men will say, great men, rich men, bondmen, free men, hiding themselves in the, in the dens and the mountains of the rocks. Will you say, fall on us? Hide us. From him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? Which side are you going to be on? Based upon your life right now. But see, brothers and sisters, the beautiful thing about it is you can, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, you can change the outcome. Not that you have the power to change it. Not that you have the power to, to transform your character. No, 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 no. Jesus can only do that. But see, God has given us the power of choice. And you can choose right now who you will serve. The Bible is real. Prophecy has been fulfilled. I don't care what skeptics and, and different individuals say. Oh, the Bible contradicts itself. Deep study of the word of God shows us that God's word is true. The events that the Bible prophesied that would happen are happening. There are other things that have not happened yet, but they will happen. God is true. If God be God, follow him. But if Baal be your God, the things of this world be your God, if your adulterous relationship, your fornicating relationship be your God, if your weed 
smoke be your God. You pushing on, you 30 some years old, getting ready to head to 40 before you know it. And you still doing the same foolish stuff you doing, you were doing back when you was 18. Let that liquor be your God. If your false ideologies be your God. If your homosexual promoting, supporting church be your God. Follow that then. But as for me at my house, by the grace of God, we will serve the Lord. And if that is your desire, I ask that you kneel with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. He is soon to return. We thank you for the prophecies in your word. And Father, I know I said some things that were kind of straightforward. But Father, Lord, I ask that you will still do your work upon the hearts and minds of the people. That they will see that your word is true. That they will see that the signs that are mentioned in your word have happened. That they will make that decision to follow you. Some are watching, know these things. It's a rehearsal for them. But for some people, they just have a head knowledge of these truths, but don't have an experimental knowledge of Christ. So, Father Lord, we ask that you will give them that experimental knowledge of Christ, not just a head knowledge. Because we have so many people, so much, so many church folk who just have a formal religion and they just go about the motions and they just, and they're, they're just churched. They just want church. They just want to have church, but they don't want to be the church. They got a lot of head knowledge. They, they know this, they know this stuff. But by the interactions with one another, they're unconverted unready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. So it's not just head knowledge of these truths. It's having an experimental knowledge in Christ Jesus that's going to save us. So Father, please get, give the listeners an experimental knowledge. We thank you for your word. Bless us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Next week, by God's grace, we're going to look at a continuation of this particular subject. We're going to come from a different angle this time to show once again and prove from the scriptures that Jesus is soon to return. Let us get ready. Let us stay ready. God bless you. If you have any topic or question, please comment below or visit www.facebook.com slash lifeline1844 and leave a message. Thank you for your prayers and continued support.